All right, eleven thirty, WSIA Staten Island. Uh, right now, only streaming uh, online at WSIA.fm. Also on TuneIn. This is the Voice of Summer. We are back here on a Saturday morning as we talked about is going on. Chris Potato and Anthony Pierno with you. As uh, still have a lot to get to. Uh, we touched on the Knicks to start off. Uh, let's get to the uh, five and two Brooklyn Nets. Uh, you know, you just you just hate the Nets, don't you? I don't hate the Nets, no. I feel like you're uh, you just so against them. No, I mean I don't root for them, but I, mean, I don't hate them. Uh, but they have they've won three in a row now, and uh, oh no, they four in a row, four in a row, and they're beginning a three game West Coast trip uh, tomorrow against the Kings, Kings, Lakers, and uh, the Warriors up next for the five and two Nets, but uh, coming off of a Thursday night victory at home against the Boston Celtics. Yeah. Uh, which uh, Mr. Joe Johnson made his presence felt there in the fourth quarter, was the go-to guy for the Nets there. Finally showed up. Which was nice because uh, the first three quarters he was non-existent. But, uh, for his whole season. Yeah, he, he really, actually he showed himself uh, the day before against, well, the game before, excuse me, against Cleveland and, uh, Him and uh, Williams, they've been awful shooting from the field. They're pretty, they've not been yeah, good. Yeah, I, I think they're still trying to feel each other out, but uh, obviously they're both veterans. Uh, Williams yeah. is starting to play better. Uh, he really took control of that fourth quarter, too, really getting to the line. Uh, he hit all the free throws that he needed to hit to seal that win. But I felt like it was a, a must-win for the Nets, considering both Rondo was out, and uh, even though Wallace was out for the Nets, uh, you have to take advantage of that, and especially a home game versus a division rival like the Celtics. Uh, it was a really big win for them, and uh, it wasn't much of a litmus test, but it was a sign that, you know what, we're going to compete against you guys for, for the entire season. Uh, we want to try and win this division, and it was a nice win. And now they have a, a couple of tough games on the road. Uh, Sacramento is a young, really gritty team. Uh, obviously, the big game is against the Lakers, uh, and they're really starting to play well, and I believe D'Antoni's ready to go for wow. Sunday. So, uh, you know, they're going to have a couple of tough games on the West Coast, but I think if, like, you said with the Knicks, if you can sign up for a 2-1 and one West Coast road trip and then uh, come back to, to the home court and, and continue to play, uh, I think you'd be pleased with that. So I think 2-1 uh, and one on, on the road would be a nice little road trip for them. And I think 5-2 and two overall you have to be happy with because, again, I think clearly they're not playing their best basketball by any stretch. No, they're not, no. not even close at this point. But, hey, they're still 5-2. and two. Uh, And, listen, they haven't beat anyone that's been very impressive, but – you deal with the games on your schedule, you beat who you have to beat. I mean, at least exactly. they're winning the games. I mean, at least they're beating these teams that they should beat. And, and they should have been 6-1 and one like the Knicks. They gave away uh, one away against the Minnesota, Minnesota Timberwolves. They got completely blown out against the Heat. Uh, but, you know, they're, they're so, they have to start working together, starting to gel together. Uh, it's been tough without Wallace because he creates a lot of mismatches for for their opponents. and They also, usually, need, him, they also need him back because their defense. They need help. Well, yeah, no, he, he's, he's the biggest part uh, of that defense all, because uh, he goes 100% every time out on the floor. And, uh, you know, he can match up with three different positions, anywhere between the two and the four. Um, and, you know, he's usually the guy that you'll, you'll put on a Paul Pierce or a LeBron James to try and shut them down or at least contain them a little bit throughout a ball game. Uh, and, you know, he adds some explosiveness on the offensive end as well. Uh, but defensively, they're still only giving up 93 points a game. Uh, and you know they're they're not playing at their best basketball just yet. But you know, I, I throughout the first couple of games, the one thing that I've noticed is that there are certain times that their second unit really picks up uh, their starting lineup. Their bench has been great. Yeah, guys like C.J. Watson, he's been huge off the bench, adding a, a change of pace for them. And, and Reggie Evans, I thought was one of the more underrated signings during the offseason because I watched a basketball game last year against the Clippers. He had four offensive rebounds on one possession, and that's the type of energy he brings to a team. Uh, he, just, he goes all out on the, on the court. He hustles down rebounds and plays relentlessly on defense. And, uh, you know, he's going to be that thorn in your side. Even if you're Childress Stackhouse is playing yeah, good, Stackhouse he's giving is, good minutes as like well. Stackhouse is going to be your guy that he's just an old veteran that if you get him on the floor, he's just going to play the game the right way. And it, hopefully that rubs off on a bunch of other players, but I really think that uh, this team is going to go as far as their starting five because uh, when the starting five is playing to their capability, uh, I, I would make the argument that they're one of the best five in all the league. And, you know, one through five, you have, uh, I think, a top five at maybe every position minus power forward. And, you know, Humphreys has still been one of the top 
five rebounders over the last two years. So Marino has done a nice job as Lopez, yeah. and him and Williams already have developed a nice uh, chemistry there with the, the pick and roll. I That's mean, what Lopez, we missed last year with Lopez being out. I mean, I mean, he's been efficient offensively so far, Lopez. I mean, his defense is not good. Uh, he, but he's he's not a good defender, but with his length, he gets by because he can he can block some shots as he's uh, as people blow by him, and uh, he makes up for it with his length a little bit, but. You know his rebounds have been up a little bit, which you like to see. Uh, he's had a, he's recorded a few double doubles already this year, which you which you are pleased about. Uh, but he's scoring the ball and he's that inside presence that the Nets need. Uh, but like you said, I think it also is really important for the Nets to shoot the ball better, and that goes for Williams and Joe Johnson because obviously when they both get hot, uh, they can light it up be- behind the arc, and and that's a big part of their game. But other than those guys, they don't shoot the ball particularly well from long range, and sometimes you need that three ball to Know, distance yourself from uh, your opponent, and they haven't been able to really do that. But and also <laughs> a very interesting aspect of this team is that not many of them are used to winning. Over the last five years, the Nets have been a horrible team every single year, and uh, they find themselves sometimes up 20, uh, 15 points during a game, and those leads have been cut down or even surpassed. Uh, and obviously against the Timberwolves, they blew a 22-point lead. But they have to get used to playing with lead because they've been doing that all season long. Uh, and luckily, they've been able to withstand uh, a comeback from whoever they're, they're playing. And against the Celtics, they had to come back and, and regain the lead, and they finally closed it out. And uh, Williams suffered a leg injury there on Thursday night against the Celtics, but he says he's going to be fine to play tomorrow. Yeah, he got a, a knee in the back uh, when he was doing a spin move. But you know, he, he looks like he's going to be ready to go, and obviously... Yeah, he's a he's a pretty big key for for the Nets going forward. So oh, pretty, he's he's the, he's I the mean, biggest. The only, it's only that uh, the franchise was riding on his shoulders during the offseason. Again, Lopez eighteen point uh, four points per game, fifty seven percent shooting. Yeah, that's big. And the only thing with Lopez that I would like to see, obviously, we mentioned his defense, but that's not really going to change. Uh, but he he's big enough and strong enough to get to the free throw line, and particularly in three point plays. Um, Usually he's a good th- uh, free throw shooter, but uh, so far this season he hasn't been up to his usual self. So I'd like to see him knock down a couple more free throws uh, consistently because those are free points on the board that you can uh, that you can put up. And Lopez has been the, the main presence uh, down low for them. So. Um, what, what have you thought about uh, the atmosphere of Brooklyn Barclays Center early on so far? I'll tell you what they're defending their home court pretty well. They should be five and zero at home minus that Minnesota game. Uh, but one thing that I do love is that they're if they have a lead in that final minute, the entire crowd is screaming Brooklyn, Brooklyn. And it's just a good feeling knowing that you know the crowd's behind them. They have a good atmosphere in the building, and I'm looking forward to that November 26th game because uh, again I wasn't able to go to that home opener, and you know I've been I was really upset that I wouldn't even be able to go. So uh, I, it still falls on a day that I have class. I'm not going to my class that day. I'm going to that to that game, and it should be uh, an extremely entertaining atmosphere um, against the Knicks, and you know, hopefully hopefully they can pull it out, because that's going to be, that I think that's going to be their first real litmus test, because, you know, three weeks into the season, you should be playing good enough basketball to be competing against some of the better teams in your conference. So the Brooklyn Nets, uh, winners of four in a row, five and two, Knicks six and one, so all good is uh, all New York basketball. basketball, New York basketball. No, what what was the last right time now. you saw the Knicks and Nets get off to a start like this? Probably, and St. Uh, St. John's too, locally, St. the college basketball, St. John's is playing well so New far, so New York basketball uh, right now is in uh, full swing, doing very well. Uh, let's stay here in the NBA and uh, the Eastern Conference and... Uh, anything stand out to you? Uh, we'll start off in the Eastern Conference here early on to start this season. Uh, you know, and a, a lot of people thought that the Pistons were gonna, uh, you know, not maybe say it'd be a playoff team, but uh, a bit. yeah, be you know one and nine so far. Uh, Wizards are still winless, of course. You know, they're zero seven, but they don't have John Wall and Nene's out still. They don't have him either. I believe they're one of the lowest scoring teams in basketball. Off, I mean, they can't score anything. I mean, they're yeah. terrible off. They trust worse. Eighty four games, so. Yeah, I mean, when you can't score the ball, you can't expect to win. But uh, uh, yeah, so Washington's still the only winless team right now in basketball at zero seven. But as far as the Eastern Conference goes, I think uh, Charlotte's been a nice little surprise too. They're four and three. Yeah, how about the Bob? I mean, the Bobcats won seven games all of last year, and they're four and three. 
And uh, they actually, uh, they play the Grizzlies tonight, right? I believe they play the I Grizzlies the tonight. Yeah, I, I believe they play the Grizzlies tonight. Uh, the Bobcats do uh, yeah. at, at, in, in Charlotte. It's it's impressive though because you know they. I just realized that when I saw them, I was watching it on uh, one of their games, and I saw that they had two national champions over the last two years on their roster in Kemba Walker and now uh, Kid Gilchrist. Kid, and yeah. I mean, they're pretty good players. They they have some young guys coming up and. Uh, they're going to have to play together. Uh, you know, They have the new-look uniform, so maybe they're trying to change the culture there. Well, Kemba, uh, and, and Kemba Walker's been a key. I mean, he's uh, reverting back to his UConn days, hitting you know big game-winning shots. That's what happened on Wednesday against the T-Wolves. Had the uh, game-winning jumper to give them the victory. But, yeah, 4-3, so a nice start there. And they are home tonight against Memphis. So Yeah, so uh, Grizzlies will uh, visit the Bobcats tonight. They're off to a nice start. Walker, they have uh, Kid Gilchrist, of course, as well. Um, Milwaukee 5-2 and two to uh, start the season right now. Uh, they are atop the uh, Central. And uh, they will take on New Orleans tonight. The new New Orleans uh, three and four to start uh, the season. Uh, but Milwaukee doing a nice job. You have uh, Jennings and Ellis there, uh, of course, uh, leading the way in the backcourt. And uh, even the veteran uh, Dambert has been contributing. Has uh, been uh, contributing on the offensive end. Uh, had 14 points in the win on Wednesday night for Milwaukee. Now the starters in that game didn't play that all in the fourth quarter because uh, Milwaukee. Uh, was uh, you know in routing was had had a big lead in that game on Wednesday night that they played Indiana, uh, but Milwaukee off to a nice start there five and two. Yeah, I was a little bit concerned going in, when they made that trade Monte Ellis for Andrew Bogut because you know having both Ellis and Jennings who are scoring first type of guards that you know would they be able to play together and so far Jennings has taken the back seat a little bit. He's averaging eight assists a game and. He's letting uh, Monte Ellis do most of the scoring. They're both near 20 points a game, but Jennings really taking the point guard position into his hands, and uh, he's being the general for the Bucks. Yeah, so Milwaukee uh, under Skiles off to a good start. Again, taking on uh, New Orleans uh, this evening. Uh, what else was there in the Eastern Conference? I, I was thinking about um, that I wanted to mention. Uh, you know, well, well uh, Chicago right now, uh, I, the, the issue with Chicago, they just, they've they been inconsistent um, you know, right now, what was it, 5-3, and three, I believe, so far right now uh, on the season for the Bulls. Uh, they're still playing very good defensively, even that without... Uh, That's what's going to carry them most. Yeah, without ball. Rose. I mean, they're still being a good defensive team. And, uh, and, then, uh, and then offensively, you've had nowhere. I believe he's averaging 16 points per game. So he stepped up uh, on the offensive end. He's actually contributing heavily for them. Noah's been big, and uh, in the absence of Derrick Rose, they signed uh, back Luke, uh, Kirk Heinrich, and... Instead of him performing the way he should be, he's been hurt a little bit. So step in uh, Nate Robinson, and he's been performing pretty well in the absence of, of the former MVP Derrick Rose. So you know the the Bulls are really going to go as far as their defense takes them. But good contributions out of uh, Boozer and Noah taking on the scoring load, and of course Will Dang is a very versatile small forward for them. So uh, they're going to go as far as their defense takes them. And uh, you know Tom Thibodeau is one of the best coaches in the NBA as well. So. Uh, I think they'll be fine. I don't know. I, I don't think Rose will be playing this year. If he does, it might be just in time for the playoffs. Uh, but as far as the Bulls go, I think they'll still have a chance to compete for that division, uh, even without Rose. And I mentioned the Bulls because uh, today they're, they're playing the Clippers. Uh, so we can make our transition over to the Western Conference. Clippers uh, right now off to a 6-2 and two start. Best start in six seasons yeah. for L.A. Clippers. I'll tell you what, they're a scary team because not only do they have the explosiveness in the starting lineup with you know Chris Paul and Blake Griffin and Karan Butler, you got Jordan, but their their depth really scares me. I mean, Jamal Crawford coming off the bench. You have Chauncey Billups still coming uh, coming back from uh, from knee surgery that he'll be back later on in the season. But Eric Bledsoe is filled in very nicely. They have a bunch of players coming off the bench that are really key uh, to their success and. I think they have an opportunity to, to be that outside team looking in at a, at a possible one or two seed maybe in the West. I, I know that Oklahoma City is always a favorite, and the Lakers really haven't gotten on their roll yet, but I think the Clippers are, are for real now, and they're going to be here for a while. And, uh, of course, the, the Lakers uh, defeating the Suns last night, 114-102. Uh, Dan Tony, his first game coaching will be tomorrow against the Houston Rockets at the Staples Center. Uh, but 114 points last night, and even without Dan Tony on the sideline, I mean, they were still running up and down. I mean, they and without like, Nash, too. Yeah, without Nash. <laughs> but uh, what, do you, what do you think of Dan Tony going to L.A.? I think uh, with all the talk going around Phil Jackson, everybody expected him 
to become the head coach, and then all of a sudden... It seemed like everybody was surprised. Yeah. I mean, Jackson was surprised. He thought he was going to get the job. I think it's a good fit, though, for uh, for the Lakers and D'Antoni. I think, you know, he's able to to work around some stars that he's worked with in the past, obviously Nash in in the Suns organization, and then uh, everybody else, like Howard and Kobe with Team USA. Uh, So he's been familiar with these guys. A lot of the players respect him already, so... I think it's a really good fit for the Lakers, and I, I expect them to start playing some really good basketball soon. And Nash is still out another week, so hopefully for their sake they'll get him back soon uh, into the mix again. But Nash has been out now, and he's going to be out, they said, for at least another week. So, uh, but again, last night, I mean, it was so Bryant, 31 points there in the victory uh, last night against the Suns, just already looking like the Mike D'Antoni offense, just running up and down, and uh, again, 114 points they were able to put up on the board. And quickly, with the uh, Lakers, it was a really nice sight. Uh, they made a statue to commemorate uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar's uh, hook shot, and it, it was really cool looking. And I think we, sh- we should post it up uh, after the show uh, to show some, some of our fans that it was a really cool sight. They uh, had Magic Johnson, a couple of his former players, Pat Riley, uh, just come in, talk a little bit about Kareem and what he's meant to the organization and to the to the fans of, of L.A. It was a really nice sight. And, uh, you know, also, uh, sticking to Western Conference, uh, the Trailblazers, uh, I, I wanted to mention them. Uh, how about Damian Lillard? Lillard. Oh, I mean, uh, what did you say start? rookie of the year already? <laughs> I mean, he's, he started all oh, nine games so far. He, he's been tremendous. He had a career high yesterday. And last night, too. I mean, last night, yeah, he had a career high 27, but then also, I know down the stretch, what did he... Uh, he scored 16 out of Portland's last 19 in the game. He's unbelievable. So down the stretch, I mean, he came up big. He was clutch hey, for them last night. Do, do you know what pick he was chosen in the end? Was Six. he sixth? Yeah. Sixth overall. Yeah, you know what pick that was? The Nets pick that they uh, traded for Gerald Wallace. <laughs> Just saying. Uh, but you know what? He was, uh, he's was. he been great for them. And they also have, uh, why can't I remember his name? Batum. Uh, well, Batum is, is a star in the yeah, middle. Yeah, he had a career he, high last yeah, night, 35. Uh, I've been the following Jones. him from uh, from fantasy basketball over the last couple of years. They have, been a lot, they, they have a lot of young and of talent. Of course, Marcus Aldridge. But, yeah. I mean, can you imagine what this team would be like if Greg Oden stayed healthy, if Brandon Roy stayed healthy? This team would be stacked. And, obviously, you know, things would be different because they wouldn't have the draft picks and stuff. But, I mean, they've developed some really good young talent uh, that they're putting together. And there's another big guy that they got out of uh, – Illinois, I can't remember his name. I'm going to look it up, but he had a nice contribution yeah. yesterday. Uh, and uh, get Lillard, 18.4 points per game, averaging 6.6 assists per game. I mean, and he can do it all. I mean, he, he can shoot. He can drive to the basket. He gets to, I mean, he's able to, get to the foul line yeah. as well. Very athletic. So, I mean, he's been very impressive, Lillard, so far. I mean, that's, that's a, a young, exciting team coming up there in uh, Portland. They have a lot of young talent. Six in the NBA in scoring, and you don't, you don't usually expect that. Uh, from a young team, but the other guy is Myers Leonard. Uh, yeah. He had eight rebounds yesterday. Uh, another big body. He can shoot the ball a little bit, but he is he's going to be, a, a, I think, a really good player in this league as well. Uh, seven foot one, 250-pound kid, and he's 20 years old. I mean, these guys are all young and up and coming. And also another guy in Portland, J.J. Hickson, who they picked up off of the free agency during the year last year. He almost, I think he's like in the top three or four in the, in the NBA in rebounding. So I'm actually going to look that up too because he's on my fantasy team and I just see that he's out-rebounding guys like Dwight Howard and Blake Griffin and he's just having an outstanding season. So uh, Portland beat Houston last night in overtime, 119-117. So uh, both the uh, Trailblazers and the Rockets right now 4-5 and five to open up the year. Uh, it is 11:47 here, WSIA Staten Island, 88.9 FM on this uh, Saturday uh, afternoon. As uh, we talked to you about what is going on in the world of sports here, we're going to take a break, and then when we he, come back... He's six, by the way. To six. <laughs> All right. Uh, when we come back, uh, we'll move on. There's still a lot to get to uh, with uh, MLB to talk about. Of course, a big trade uh, went down. And uh, Ari Dickey, NL Cy Young Award winner. And now is the time to trade Ari Dickey. Uh-huh. Shouldn't have missed trade Ari Dickey. Uh, we could, get, we could uh, get, get the Yankees. Yeah, why not? Take David Wright, too, along with, with them. Let's just send both of them. Yeah. Dickey and Wright. No, I definitely do not want a ride uh, at all. You could definitely hold on to him, I mean, without a doubt. Um, and also, of course, NFL to get to. Uh, Giants have their bye week, but we'll get into them. Uh, of course, had a, they were dominated last week by the Bengals. And, of course, the Jets. Uh, apparently, the Jets are never going to win a f- another football game this season, according to a lot of people. Uh, So we'll get into that as well. Uh, We'll take a break, 11.48. We'll be back right after this.